Hello there, my name is Nick and I am the developer of this game, From the Depths. I'm going to give you a tutorial on all the different features and how to use them. So we're going to start in the Vehicle Designer, so click Single Player and then Vehicle Designer. This is what we see when we enter the Vehicle Designer, so it's a first person view and we're standing on a raft. If we, um, we can look around with our mouse, uh, if we press Tab we go to a third person view and uh, we can fix that with another press of Tab and we can move around with W, A, S and D and we can jump with space. To enter build mode we press B um, that brings us into this building view. We can then bring up the inventory using E and we can flick through the different tabs of the inventory showing the different components that can be placed. When we see a green component it means there's multiple options as you can see here and when we see some red components that means they are locked um, and they require us to um, achieve certain things to unlock them. So I've selected a wood block here. Once we've selected the wooden block um, we can move our building marker around using W, S, A and D. We can also raise it using space and lower it using Alt. Once we get it into a position where we want to um, place a block it goes green and we just use the left mouse button to place. Every time we press the left mouse button the build marker will move forward one step. Alternatively we can use the right mouse button which will pull the camera back towards us. If we want to remove a block we simply uh, move our build marker on top of a, of a block and it will go red and then we um, click like this. Again if we want to pull the camera towards us we use the right mouse button. We can also hold down the mouse button in order to place a continuous line. We can also use another way of building, which is just to um, wait till the build marker is green, and then we tap the middle mouse button. And then now, as we move the marker around, it will automatically place blocks in any location that it can. And this allows us to um, control the building process just using the keys. Similarly, if the build marker is red and we press the middle mouse button, um, it will remove any, any blocks that we move it over. If we want our build marker to move um, quicker, we can double tap W and then it will, it will run forward. The important thing to remember about the build marker is that the, uh, the keys control it, but it moves relative to the direction that it's facing. So if you want to build a ring around this vehicle, then make sure that the, um, the camera is, also, is always facing fairly horizontal. And if you want to build upwards or downwards, make sure that you move the camera um, to allow that. We can also build using a mirror which is very very useful so if you press N at any point it will place a mirror looking in the direction that you're facing and now we can um, remove blocks using a mirror and also place blocks using a mirror so that was some uh, removing there and here's some placing. Something else that is very handy is the ability to lock the rotation so if we take a block um, that has got um, that is quite long, like this one, for example, which is a wooden beam, which is four meters long. Um, we can lock the rotation pressing G, and you'll see that displayed on the screen. I'm actually just going to uh, place a mirror here now as well, and then we can do stuff like this. Another thing we can do is move our um, build marker on top of the block that we want to select um, and we can actually press R at that point to select that block for placing. So you can see here I'm using R to toggle between the, um, the single wooden block and the beam. One final thing that we can do uh, which is only possible when we've got our one by one by one block selected is fill. So to fill what we do is we get an enclosed space like this one which as you can see we've got a ring all the way around the outside here. Um, and we look into that ring and we press F and that will fill the entire area with blocks. You can actually fill any shape you want so if we just come and create a random um, shape on here we can look down at that and fill it. Another trick we can do in build mode is to actually replace blocks by holding shift. So if I select uh, a lightweight alloy and I hold shift um, and click around on this uh, raft we can actually see that we are uh, replacing all of the, um, the wood with lightweight alloy. 
Once you get a very significant vehicle uh, that's very large, it can be quite difficult to see, um, find your way around and remember where the components are and build actually within it. Um, one way of getting around this problem um, is to press P, which actually shrinks all of the blocks in the design. And then you can have a look right through des the design and figure out where the stuff is. Uh, so you can see the keel down there, some air pumps, um, the ammo, ammo storage rooms here, um, some shield projectors, um, ammunition manufacturing, and here is the AI mainframe. Um, I'm pressing P once again. We'll put the blocks back to their normal size. Something else we can do in build mode is to actually place upside down. So I'm just going to demonstrate that quickly on this little raft um, by placing a large cannon. So to select that from the inventory now in simple weapons. There it is. So I'll place one up here, um, the correct way up. And then if we hold tab whilst placing, we will actually place the component upside down. And we can place one on the underside of our raft if we want. So any component in the game can be placed upside down. The final thing I'm going to talk about in build mode is actually painting of blocks in different colors. To do that, we go to the, um, the color picker and you can see we've got a, a palette of 32 different colors. I'm going to pick color 10 and I'm just going to increase the intensity, uh, make it more blue, make it a bit more green, add a bit of red until it turns into a purple color. Now if we go to color replace mode, which is here, and we'll see the build marker has turned to that color and when we click rather than adding or removing blocks, it just changes the color of the blocks. Um, and once we're finished with the purple, we can go back to the color picker and we can pick another another number and we can change the color. So we're basically painting by numbers um, by choosing a number and then assigning a color to it. And then we can go in and pick another color. So if we want um, quite a weak paint color. We can uh, set the intensity quite low and you can see um, it just adds a bit of a tint to it and then we can change the intensity to be very high to you know, paint it in a very strong paint. Uh, one advantage of painting by numbers is that we can go and change all of the um, colors that are associated with the numbers afterwards so we don't have to repaint the whole thing. I've restarted the designer now to show you how you might go about building a simple boat. Um, so if we just place a mirror here then we can um, place the floor of the boat we can then um, fill the back side of it obviously we've got a hole at the bottom now um, just fill that up and now we've got um, a basic shape of a boat here now we'll see uh, water lapping inside it occasionally. We can actually uh, stop that by going to the um, inventory and going to the water tab of the inventory and placing an air pump in it. Um, that will actually pump out all the water and make it more buoyant. So this whole enclosed space now uh, will be buoyant. What we need next to make this boat work um, is to put an engine in. So we go back into the inventory and um, we select an engine block. We then place a number of crankshafts that connect to the engine block. Um, we can place some cylinders now, so that's cylinders from the inventory that we've placed there. Um, we can place some carburetors on top of there. Um, we can even place some superchargers on top of the carburetors. We can connect the um, cylinders to exhausts. Now you don't need to do all of this, the more the more stuff you place and the more connections it has to the relevant parts, the more efficient and the more powerful the engine will be. Uh, one thing we do need is um, engine fuel tanks. Um, so we need to connect fuel tanks like this um, to the carburetor. Pressing R again to select the fuel tanks just to demonstrate something. These green pegs show where things connect to. So when I've got the um, fuel tank connected, we'll see that it connects to carburetors. If I use R to select the um, exhaust, we'll see that the exhausts connect to cylinders. So if we go back to the water tab of the inventory, we can select um, some propellers. Now we want our propellers to be uh, underwater or as close to the water as possible. And we're also going to want a rudder on the back, so we can place a rudder there. To control the ship, um, we just need to go to the vehicle, to the control tab and select 
um, we can either have vehicle controller or ship's wheel because this vehicle is quite simple we'll just have a simple ship's wheel and we'll go to the control tab again and select chair so we've now got a chair to sit in we'll move our character over to the chair and press Q whilst looking at it and now we're sitting in the chair um, and at this point we can now start to control the vehicle so we see on the on the heads up display it's telling us that U will move us forwards um, J will decelerate us slow us down H will turn us um, and K will turn us the other way so what we might want to do um, is go down to the, the keel and we'll see that the keel has got one lead block on it already um, and we can place a bunch of lead blocks um, if we want to be more clever about it we can actually remove that keel um, and actually place it further down uh, which lowers the center of mass even more um, but makes the vehicle less heavy now that we have a working vehicle we can start to think about actually arming it um, so what I'm going to do here is just build um, a simple turret um, so if we go to the constructibles tab that is um, where the turrets are held and we've got various different types of turret and spinning blocks here um, turrets are the ones which are for holding weapons spin blocks are for other things like masts and sails and things like that uh, so we're going to select um, an azimuth only turret so this isn't going to look up or down it's just going to spin around um, I'm going to place it um, facing forwards in the ship and now we're actually building on the turret itself so to build a simple cannon we go to the custom cannons tab and we can select um, the firing piece which is the main component I'm just going to place a mirror here to make things easier for us now we're now going to start placing the barrel um, the motor driven barrel um, is a good component to place because it allows um, the barrel to look left right up and down um, and aim at, aim at more targets and then the barrel component after that is quite useful for um, just increasing accuracy and uh, the speed of the shot the six way connector uh, we can place that off the um, off the firing piece um, and that's going to be where we um, where we connect the rest of the components to now what we want to connect next is the auto loaders um, auto loaders allow us to uh, connect ammo and also um, different warheads to the cannon so once we've got the auto loaders placed and they've all been connected we can uh, place some ammo boxes so if we stick some ammo boxes up here um, and down there that leaves some space open to place some explosive warheads um, like this and I think we'll just stick a few more ammo boxes here so ammo boxes are going to increase the rate of fire and increase the ammunition that's available to the turret and explosive warheads are going to add explosive damage to the shells uh, one final thing we want to do probably is increase the gauge of the barrel and the gauge of the shell, the caliber um, so if we place some gauge increases onto the connectors um, that will make the weapon more powerful and finally um, a couple of laser predictors will show us where the shot's going to fall so I've left build mode now by pressing B again and we can see that um, the weapon is actually falling where I'm looking um, and so is the turret pressing control at this point will fire and we can see that it's a very um, high recoil that we're getting from that um, and, s and pressing the middle mouse button will also fire we can hold these buttons down to fire at the maximum possible firing rate if we want to stop firing this turret or stop controlling this turret we need to select a different weapon slot so you can see I'm spinning through the weapon slots on the um, on the bottom left using the mouse wheel so how this works is that the turret and the gun itself have their own weapon slot um, so I'm going to press Q on them and if I set, set the, um, the turret to weapon slot 1 and then I'm going to set the weapon to weapon slot 1 that means they will only be controllable when I've selected to control weapon slot 1 um, or when I've selected weapon slot all which is this final one um, this allows me to um, select which weapons to fire and when after firing a shot you can um, follow it by pressing caps lock and then if you fire another shot it will start to follow that one so you can watch your um, 
watch your shells go in and you can also look at the kinetic damage, the armor piercing value and the explosive damage that they have. Since we're in the vehicle designer we can spawn in other vehicles and save our vehicle whenever we like. So if I press escape right now and click save vehicle I can um, rename this vehicle as um, small cannon ship and save it and then when I go back in to save it again all I need to do is press save over small cannon ship. Similarly I can um, load in various ships um, so I'm going to load in um, uh, whatever this is, it's called a Corvette, so we'll have a look. Uh, there we go. Now, <coughs> there's no limit to what you can load in in the vehicle designer, and all the resources are free. Um, when you load them in, they're naturally on, on your own team. Um, so you can see the Corvette's not going to attack us or anything. And we can just test our weapon by, um, by shooting at the Corvette. Okay, so we can see immediately that it's not very accurate. So if we go in here... Um, one thing we, we probably want to do at this point is put a few more barrels on it. Um, and we can see the um, the damage being done to the Corvette there. So we've knocked a bunch of blocks off, damaged a lot other. I think we've broken this turret on the top. Um, if we want to see how the custom missiles work, um, we can do that quite simply by going up um, to this turret and removing the cannon from it um, and then basically just building a, um, a missile turret in its place. So if we go to the missiles torpedoes tab, well I'm actually going to first place a couple of um, wooden blocks on there, get rid of the old turret, um, and have a platform to build on. So if we go to the custom missiles again, the missile controller is the main component of the custom missiles. Um, we can is put onto that a connector and that allows us then to place multiple missile launch pads like that. I'm just going to place a, a mirror quickly there. Um, missile blocks are where the missile is actually held. So we've got three, um, sorry, three missiles in total. Two, two of them are four blocks long, which are these two on the sides, and in the center we've got a three block long missile. <coughs> to edit the missile we press Q on it and we can see on this side we have the list of um, components available to us and on this side we have what's currently there so we're going to double click short range thruster to place one of them and uh, then place a fuel tank and we're going to scroll up and place some a couple of fins on the end we're going to place a um, missile infrared seeker and then here we're going to place um, a warhead so let's have the explosive warhead. On this longer missile, um, what we can do is place um, something similar. Um, and then what we're going to place here is going to be a laser designated receiver. So it's going to be a laser designated missile. And then we're going to have a fragmentation warhead and we can actually edit the cone ag angle of the fragmentation so that it all comes out in the same direction and then this final part um, can be an explosive warhead and what we can actually do then is save that design as um, laser designated frag we can then go to the other one and we can click load and we can just load in that missile we're almost ready to fire this missile what we need now is to go to missile components again and select a laser emitter. Now we can see now that um, there's a laser coming off here that's pointing to the target. Uh, when I fire my missiles the two larger ones will follow that, follow that um, laser in. The smaller one which is a heat seeking missile is going to aim straight for the engine. Now because I've got um, missiles here, in order to reload them I'm going to need ammo. So I'm going to need to place some ammo barrels. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is place a few ammo barrels and also an ammunition processor. Um, 
the ammunition processors turn resource, which is infinite currently, into ammo. And now my missiles will be reloaded, and I can fire again. I can actually follow them in. Um, that's the two laser designator ones, so you can see them following the laser. If we want to make this vehicle more maneuverable and turn faster, uh, one way to do that is to go into build mode again um, and select some propellers again and we'll actually place them on the front of the vehicle um, facing sideways. So we'll place one there and one there. And now when we control it, um, we are actually able to fire up those propellers and use them as basically um, turning thrusters and then we can go the other way. Um, <coughs> we can actually go um, and really take this to the limit by placing one here and pressing Q on it and swapping it from a thruster to a reverse thruster. What that means is it's actually going to fire um, the opposite way so that we are pushing pushing the back round like that whilst pushing the front round the other way. So you can really spin it quite fast. If we want to put this vehicle under AI control, um, that's quite easy to do as well. What we need to do is place a mainframe. So I'm going to place it um, here. So we go to the AI tab and we select mainframe. Then what we need to do is basically add some motherboard slots, which are the AI card slots left and right. So I'm going to place um, two of them and that gives us four places to place cards. So I'm going to place um, or a naval AI card. I'm going to place, um, go back to the AI tab, um, a patrol card, a target prioritization card, and an aim point selection. So the naval AI card will allow the ship to actually be controlled um, by, by the mainframe and actually driven by the mainframe. The patrol card will allow me to give it movement orders. The target prioritization um, algorithm will allow it to select a priority target um, and basically attack the most, the highest priority target. And the aim point selection will allow it to um, aim its weapons at the most um, vulnerable part of the target, or most important part of the target. So that's basically the AI um, pretty much set up now. What we can do to get it to control our weapons, however, is is one of two things. We can either use um, six-way connectors or five-way connectors to basically um, connect up the weapons like this. So how we actually get it to control this turret is to place a, a local weapon controller underneath the turret and we can see it says controlling one weapon. So it's, it's got the turret. Um, that's one way of connecting things up using um, you know, connecting AI stuff up. Um, the other way would be to do this. Let me just repair that. Is to stick a wireless transmitter on top of the um, the mainframe, or, or just connect it to the mainframe, um, and stick a sorry a receiver here. So you can see that it's the the AI wireless receiver is receiving on channel one, and it tells you which mainframe it's connected to. So now this turret is under AI control. We can also create planes in front of that using a variety of different um, airborne components. So if I look at the inventory, we have um, jet engines, um, and larger jet engines, wings, ailerons, tail planes. We can create helicopter blades. Um, we have some wheels for running around on the decks of aircraft carriers, etc. We also have hot air balloons um, and stabilization equipment. If we want to go into space, we have the ion thruster. Um, so seeing where those components are on this design, we have the wings here, um, huge jet engines there, uh, same on the other side. Here we have ailerons. Um, here we actually have a heat decoy, which will attract heat-seeking missiles away from the engines of this vehicle. This is actually a bomber, so we see um, all the bombs, which are actually basically just missile components without thrusters, um, lined up below. Um, and we have some uh, jets on the back. Now these jets have been placed specifically um, to basically apply the force um, 
completely balanced around the center of mass. So to control this plane, um, we just go and step down into the um, into the chair, press Q to enter that. We can uh, press Q on this controller to make sure that it's in air mode, which will allow us to control our thrusters. Uh, so we'll press T to accelerate. And we'll fly along. Um, so it's st still got a bit more um, force above the center of mass, which is why it's moving down. Um, we're just going to fly back towards our starting point, which is over here somewhere, I think. And then we'll have a look at these um, bombs. So if we press control, they will start to fire. Now they've got a staggered fire add-on, so they all they drop out with a, a tenth of a second delay between them. So we'll try that again. There we go. Uh, dropping the bombs. Now what we can do now actually is um, spawn in an enemy ship. And we'll set this um, the AI control on. So what our ship, what our little plane is going to do is um, fly over the top and then uh, drop its bombs. So we should see it. Now they've actually got magnets on them. So you can see them all coming down. And those that get those that land close enough um, will get attracted to this. So it basically drops a sort of minefield in the water. And then you can see the plane coming back for another pass now. Very very cool design. Perhaps drops its bombs a little bit too late that time. So we've seen customizable cannons and customizable missiles. One other um, type of customizable component is the customizable drill, um, which is what we see here. So at the back of the ship, we have um, a large, there's the drill itself, and here's the large um, sort of power supplies um, and, and the various components that um, produce the, the power. Um, we then have this sort of drill um, extension device, which is actually connecting all the drill bits um, back to the drill itself. If we take an external view of this, um, we can see that it goes underneath the water. So to see this drill in action, I've just spawned another vehicle. Um, and basically, if we just uh, drive our, our drill vehicle at it, um, we will see it start to dig in. Now a drill this size does a lot of damage, especially with this number of drill bits. We've just hit the ammunition stores there, basically, so that's caused a, a very huge explosion. Um, this little bit here, and the ship will fall into two pieces. There we go. The final type of custom component that I'm going to talk about in this video is the custom lasers. So here we have um, a fortress, um, and what we've built in here is a very large engine down here, very powerful. Um, producing about 17,000 power. And then in these side um, compartments, we have the laser cavities. So what we've actually got here, if I just go into build mode and inspect it, um, the main component of the of the laser is actually over here. And it's this multi-purpose laser block. And it is connected to these transceivers, um, which are actually connecting directly into other transceivers in the two side compartments. Um, and what happens is that um, connection is going down these connections and then it's actually connecting into um, laser coupler blocks which are these things here, here, here and also here, here and here. Now each one of those couplers has got a lot of Q switches on which means that the, um, the laser beam we produce is going to be very um, fast firing pulses rather than a continuous wave and each one of those couplers has got one single laser cavity which looks like this um, and it's these pump objects that are actually putting the energy into the cavity when we want to fire it so we have one whole compartment like this on this side and then a, a mirror image on the other side they connect to this multi-purpose laser block that's actually connecting via transceiver um, to this transceiver which is actually connecting straight up into this turret and it's in this turret where we actually have the weapon components of the laser which are these um, um, they're called laser combiners and the laser combiners have got laser optics on them which allow them to fire so here we actually have um, one, two, three, 
four different lasers. So I'm going to show you how that works now. So we can basically, um, well let's take this turret first. Um, basically approach our turret and when we pull the, the fire button we get the very fast pulses out of those four lasers. Now we can make them more accurate by adding more optics. So if I um, spawn in an enemy vehicle uh, such as the um, let's do something fairly big um, we'll see our lasers shooting at it and every time they hit we get a little explosion mark so it's a very powerful laser coming from a very large fortress and we can see that it's basically shredding um, this ship what we also just saw there was um, the anti anti-missile lasers firing at the missiles that the ship is launching. So you can see a missile there and we'll see it um, be intercepted by laser beams. There's one that's lasted a little longer. Now the laser beams that are intercepting the missiles are actually coming from these little devices here, laser missile defense blocks. Um, so there's one on each side of the turret and the things that are actually spotting the, the, um, the uh, missiles themselves are these things called missile warners. And the missile warners are actually an AI component. We can see them um, placed here in all the corners of the fortress. Well, we've basically stripped off one whole side of it, pretty much. You can see right inside it. And it's um, pretty much scrap right now. So this is a very, very powerful laser setup. Another feature that we can make use of in From the Depths is the ability to save and load turrets. So if I go over to this turret here and begin building on it by looking at it and pressing B, um, we can then bring up the inventory and we can click Save Sub-Object. Uh, so I'm going to click here and save it as Laser Turret. We can then basically leave build mode and enter build mode on any, any um, like main vehicle. Um, and now when we go to this tab, it's actually called Load Sub-Object, and we can see laser turret there. And we can basically just place um, these laser turrets wherever we want. Which is a very neat way of uh, building a vehicle faster. In order to place a new vehicle in From the Depths, all we need to do is uh, enter build mode. We then go to the Constructables tab and select Vehicle. Now we can also select from the Constructibles tab Fortress um, and if we want to pl place a fortress like this thing here. So we just click once and then we start building on that new vehicle. From the Depths allows you a very precise control of your vehicle by giving you access to this complex controller component which we see in front of us. Um, it can be found on the inventory here. What that allows you to do is actually uh, bind keys directly to components so what we have here is a ring of um, ion thrusters which will get us into space um, all pointing down and then around the outside we see a couple of ion thrusters pointing in different directions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind these ion thrusters which are pointing down um, to the O key and then with a, with a positive input. So pressing O will actually drive these thrusters um, to produce an output. And I'm going to press this button which will spread this um, configuration to all similar components. So now if I go and check another one, it will have the same O key binding. Now this is the backwards direction of the vehicle, so I'm going to um, set that one to up, and set this one to up, and then on the side I'm going to set that one to right, that one to right, so pushing the right, the right button, the right cursor key will fire those thrusters and pushing the left cursor key will fire these thrusters. So when I now press O, we now fly into space. <laughs> um, and when I release it, we stop moving and our character carries on. Um, so we can take ourselves into space like this. I'm just going to put myself in the chair. So now that we're actually in space hovering, I can press right and left and forward to push this um, push this platform around in space like so the other way of using complex controllers is a bit um, 
more complicated and it involves the use of a block called the um, drive maintainer which is next to the complex controller in the inventory so if we place that there now the drive maintainer what that does is it provides a continuous output so we're going to set it to primary drive and we're going to set that to O and we're going to have a negative stimulus on L so L will increase the primary drive, uh, decrease the primary drive and O will increase it and now we come back to these components along the side and we actually set them to be primary so now when we press O we actually increase the value of the primary drive which we can see on our HUD and we can decrease that again so we can actually uh, without basically I'm not holding any buttons right now we can actually um, create a hovering platform or we can create one that's accelerating up the way and if we put our primary drive up to full we will um, really begin to move upwards quite fast now the purpose of these stabilizer blocks which are here so I'll just select a few of them um, and lock, lock the rotation like that is to counteract um, instabilities like that so as you can see now we've got perfectly stable platform and as I decrease the primary drive I will start to fall and as I increase the primary drive um, start to accelerate upwards if you want to your drive to um, increase and decrease faster just build more drive maintainers one more thing from the depths offers us is um, a character sheet if we press um, Z we get into the character sheet so we can see that we've got um, a bunch of skills here currently the only one that actually affects gameplay is this mechanic skill so we can take skill points in and out of that we also have some personal attributes that we could increase um, we have a bunch of skills some of which are only available in the vehicle designer which is these ones uh, which we can unlock and equip um, and also a bunch of items so uh, here I've got a grenade launcher which I can um, show you by pressing 7 um, so you can see our character there holding, holding his grenade launcher we can swap the type of grenade to have a bouncing grenade oh, take it out of the way. Um, and also a sticky a sticky grenade so a sticky grenade um, basically sticks on and will um, explode in about 15 seconds I think go back to the original impact grenade what we can do is actually um, lock that skill again so give it away which gives us back loads of, of skill points and then we can unlock some um, cheaper items like the SMG, the blunderbuss um, now we can see them so we have the blunderbuss quite powerful at short ranges um, and we also have an SMG the character can also do a melee attack using the uh, right mouse button at any time so he's pretty pretty cool guy um, what we're seeing here is him actually repairing so these are his repair tentacles so if I do some more damage we will see uh, these tentacles come out and start repairing and the, um, the speed at which he repairs depends on his skill in, in mechanic we can also change our avatar completely and select a whole, whole different character type which is called a scuttlebot uh, we can con control our fleet um, colors here so we can um, set the four default colors for our um, our paint job um, there's also other 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 sets of items like the binoculars which are um, sort of not, not offensive weapons so we can zoom in and out using the binoculars which is very very handy um, and we can unlock things like the paint sprayer so I can unlock that now now this is a very um, useful tool if we right click it brings up the um, uh, color palette and we can do that we can also change the brush size so that we can paint the entire vehicle very quickly um, that's damage there showing through so the, the damage darkens the paint Oops. so we can paint very fast using this paint sprayer tool that we can we can equip we also have um, some unlocks so we can see here it tells you what you need to do and on the panel on the right hand side it tells you what it will unlock so um, we unlock the huge propeller completing this mission if we uh, complete this mission we unlock the heat decoy 
and if we complete this mission uh, we unlock the uh, missile approach warner and missile defense components. Another aspect of the game is the strategic control GUI which we can bring up using N. Um, that allows us to select the target and the camera will follow it around and it gives us options depending on what AI is present on the vehicle. So one thing that we can do with this vehicle is actually uh, build on it. So press the build button. So there's actually an AI component called the build conduit on there. I'm just going to get rid of that. Um, and one thing that the, the plane is currently missing is this block which is called the uh, patrol AI. So I'm just going to um, come in here and just for just temporarily replace that card with this card. Now I'm going to stop building on it and go back into our GUI and start following it again. And now we have another option which is called patrol. So what I can do is select patrol and I can give it waypoints. Now I'm just going to press that button to change the level of detail that we see. And we can see um, that we can give it waypoints with different altitudes. Um, and what I've done there is press the L button which creates a loop. So this plane will now follow um, follow around in a loop. Now that I've um, pressed, in, pressed the movement key it will stop following that target and we can actually move and rotate this camera as we wish. Um, we can press X to remove any node from our um, list of waypoints and we can press S to select it and that will actually allow us to um, move that node. B actually inserts another waypoint before and then again we can move that one so we can create quite uh, complex patrol behavior and at any point we can right click to cancel the loop um, you know to send it off on a bombing run or something um, and again depending on the level of detail that you choose to have there's different um, options available what you can also do is change the route so we can have um, for example a bombing run like that for bombing this, um, this ship down here and then we can um, skip back to um, maybe a, a patrol so we can change the route like that. Something else that we can do is press escape and go into the options menu so we see on gameplay one is the first tab we can actually change the field of view, the mouse sensitivity, um, the speed of the external camera so we can slow that right down so that it's very slow um, and speed it right up again. We can also um, change the um, hold to build speed so that is the speed at which when we hold the mouse button down it places blocks so that's the maximum speed. We can also change the particle effect density which will make the game um, look a bit prettier but maybe run a bit slower on a low end machine. We have some options here for different ways of running the build mode. I wouldn't really recommend changing them, but you can if you like to try them out. This is a really nice feature down here. In there you can basically type the name of the thing that you want to spawn in automatically when you start the vehicle designer. Um, so if the name is wrong it will show an X and then once the name is correct it will show a tick which means there's something to spawn in and then you've got an invert mouse option. Gameplay 2 we have two very nice um, things which is the wave height factor so we can actually set um, the waves to be very um, stormy or we can, and a lot of people enjoy this, just turn the waves completely off um, which is quite nice for building. Um, the other things we have is we can change the weather so we can create um, a, a constant weather which is stormy and we can change the time of day so we can have storms at um, at morning time if we want so we'll see that the weather will now cloud over there we go so now the weather is completely stormy um, other options include the resolution full screen and graphics quality uh, the sound so you can turn music off and on you can also change the overall game volume. Um, we can also see some of the controls listed here. And one final thing is changing the size of the buttons on the HUD. Um, so you can see that let's miniaturize them now. And also, um, yeah, put them back to full size. And also, um, you can change the HUD to be, graphic, to be graphical or text-based. And when it's text-based, you can select exactly what text it's going to display to you. So. 
and can have everything and that we see everything displayed down the right hand side. In From the Depths you have uh, also some story missions which you can use to um, unlock various things. So we can see here we've got the eight factions and we can select one of our factions and then select one of our missions and then we can select uh, Begin Mission Loadout. So here it's showing us um, how much we have to spend, how many uh, resource points we have to spend on this mission and it's showing us how, how much we spent on vehicles and how much we spent on bringing a sort of raw resource into the game and then um, shows us how much we have remaining and what our score multiplier will be. So the less we spend and the faster we do it the better our score and we have a, a kind of leaderboard um, that you can get for every mission. So you've got the description here in loadout um, we can basically um, select a vehicle and we can say whether we want to use the Admiral to default which is in this case is the Shrike um, or select one of our vehicles to use or whether we don't want to use any force at all so if we click remove force there will be nothing there I'm going to take the Admiralty default um, and then we can come in here that this is my main vehicle that I'm going to be um, spawning on so it's basically um, a slight adaption of the um, well I'm just going to let's use the Admiralty default for that one as well so the Admiralty default is the Ocelot and I can say if I want to bring any resource into the game. So you can see I can bring in um, a lot of resource. I don't really want any. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring in a bit to do some repairs. So if I need to do some repairs, I'm going to have some resource to do it with. So I don't really want that much. But I'll um, bring in about that much to do some repairs with. Um, and then you can select the, the spawn point. Click launch mission. So here we are in the mission. Um, there is our target, which is um, a large cargo ship, and what we've got to do basically is destroy 70% of it to win the mission. Now, enemy reinforcements are going to be spawning in um, <coughs> throughout this mission, so we've got to make that our main priority and just try and um, destroy it. Uh, we can press F1 at any point um, to see the, the victory conditions, uh, the flare uh, failure conditions see when the enemies are going to spawn in and how how much health they have left so you can see the, the bay leaf which is this thing in the distance has got 100 percent health um obviously it's broadsiding us at the moment um and we can see our reinforcements so we can see that um this shrike vehicle will spawn in in a minute and 23 seconds so what we need to um basically do is try and repair this drill ship as fast as it's being destroyed uh, obviously, you know, if we decide this drill ship is not up to the job, we can completely customize it um, or and then bring in the customized version into the game or just create a, a brand new vehicle. So as we get closer to them, we find that the, the bailiff is kind of running low on its ammo, so it's starting to fire a bit slower and slower and slower. Um, and we've got quite a lot of points in our um, mechanic skill, so we're repairing this thing quite fast. And we brought in enough resource to... Um, you know, kind of keep it at full health most of the way in. Where's our character? Now we're still repairing. We seem to be okay. So let's let's um let's have a look at this then. So as we ram into it, um. We'll just basically punch it through now. This is all very well, but what we really want to do is cut this vehicle in half. So, uh, and also to avoid this, the um, cannon fire from that support ship back there, I'm just going to move the vehicle down the side, like so. Now we can see that this vehicle is actually manned by um, sort of crew members. So there's some manning guns. Uh, and that was one at the um, fire control computer. So we actually have some uh, NPC adversaries on this thing. Not very smart currently. Now, um, there is our support plane that spawned in. Let's just drop some bombs. Um, it's a very cool little bomber. And very soon another enemy support vehicle is going to spawn in.
Oh, there's another set of bombs which are probably more likely to hit me than the enemy. So what I'm going to do now is open this and basically just target that ship for the Shrike. So now the Shrike is going to start bombing um, that ship instead of this ship. So we can see their ammo barrels are starting to blow up and that's actually blown uh, some of the drills off the front of my vehicle, which is not ideal. You can see there some fragmentation bombs are coming in on us um, and have actually killed us. So there's my dead body at the bottom of the ship, blown up by some explosive warheads. So that's kind of what the story missions are all about. Um, often they're kind of set up so that if you use the default vehicles they're really quite difficult to win but you can always bring in your own vehicles whenever you like. So I've just started a new campaign to show you um, what it's all about. Uh, when you start a campaign you basically start on this fortress here um, and how the campaign differs from some of the other game modes is you have a world map which you can access by pressing M. Now we start in this um, sort of quadrant of the world map and we can cycle through them and we can actually see on the map the different factions HQs which are these um, these emblems designate so that's the fortress of the different factions so we're up here and this is where we basically are residing at the moment and this shows two areas that we can actually move into um, so the way to engage an area basically is to select it and select, select it engage this area now you actually need to have some vehicles or a fortress that's capable of, of moving in order to actually attack it. So right now we don't actually have um, anything to attack this board section with. But what we can see on the map is um, the enemy forces. Now they've already started to come towards us. So that's an enemy fleet there which is moving in our direction. Um, so we've got probably about 20 minutes or so to actually get um, some weapons up that will be capable of um, destroying them. Uh, so one of the things we need to know about the about the campaign is that this um, we are currently in a resource zone, which is this green ring around here. This resource gathering laser is actually going to um, uh, basically dig resource up from the ground um, and give it to us. Now um, I'm actually just going to go into the HUD and change it to graphical, um, so we can see how much resource we have there very clearly. Um, so that's gathering us natural metal um, and scrap resource and then we have some oil drills here which are gathering us oil. We have this thing which is an oil processor which is going to turn oil into fuel and the fuel will go into these tanks. Um, so you can see here that some of our, our fuel tanks are not actually full just right now. Um, so And that's because this engine is not horrendously efficient one of the things I'd recommend doing when you start a new campaign is actually uh, selling some of this um, lightweight oil alloy because it's very expensive um, it doesn't really serve a tremendously important purpose on this vehicle right now on this fortress so if we get rid of some of that you can see we're actually getting a lot of scrap um, back from it which we can spend on other things such as upgrading the engine. So the thing you want to do first is upgrade the engine and you'll then probably want to place a few more of these fortress turbines just to make the process of staying afloat more efficient. Um, you can then actually go down to the sort of dockyard area here which is very basic right now um, and you can actually interact with this object here to actually spawn in a new vehicle. Um, which we can then kind of repair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn it in at a distance of 20 meters or so and I'm just going to hold it for 10 minutes basically because it's going to take a long time to get the resource that we need to repair it. So we can see um, us basically building this vehicle now here. Um, I wouldn't recommend you come and do this immediately because we don't have the resources probably to actually finish the job. We certainly don't have any crystal right now. Um, the crystal resource, which is the fifth resource, that's a very important one for building AI and also for building explosive weaponry. So we're going to need to basically salvage that from the enemies when they attack us. So this ship is going to be, um, this plane is going to be left fairly unfinished by this building process. Um, 
but I just I'm just showing you how to how to actually spawn something in and build it. Um, if at some point we want to kind of release that ship early, and then we just press Q on here again, and it will be released. Uh, something else we can do is select it in the scrapping tool, and we can actually, um, if we decide we want the resource back, we can scrap it. Um, at this point, no one's going to be repairing it. Um, it still kind of exists in the game. We can destroy it completely by pressing this button here, and we can respawn it, like. Uh, in order to repair it and we can actually just leave it where it is and enable the repairing of it so that vehicles can um, start to repair it um, so what I'm going to do actually is just destroy it completely so now there is no more um, you know, vehicle in the game and we have most of the resource or if not all of the resource that we just spent on it has been, um, been clawed back from it um, so yeah, the basic objective of the campaign, uh, the first things you want to do, as I say, build a bigger engine, uh, protect yourself from the fleet that's that's coming in, so it, it won't be too far away now, you can see it's made quite a lot of proce progress. Um, and then once you've taken it out, um, and all the other fleets that are coming out, you should start to build some um, attack fleets of your own, and start to think about attacking the enemy, and the, and the way you do that is to um, use the uh, use the map. So what we can actually do to demonstrate this attacking um, is actually just build a new vehicle just from scratch. So if we go in here, constructables, vehicle, um, stick a mirror on and just build a little raft like that. Um, we've actually run out of resource already, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Um, we don't need to be standing on the raft at this point, but why not? We can then select this point, select our vehicle, and we can actually move it around at this point. Um, and we'll just click crew this ship. There we go. So in this area, we've actually got three enemies. Um, so what we need to do about that, well, basically, uh, at this point, we can't actually save the game. As you can see, the save button is, is um, locked off. Um, so we're going to have to actually defeat those enemies in order to save the game. So we can see them. Um, they're just little little ships right now, so because we're so close to our own spawn, we've basically just come on to some very easy enemies. Uh, these th three things, which are called sea vipers. Um, so basically, we're going to have to take these things out with our um, um, our own items. So I'm just going to actually lock some of this stuff in order to be able to afford um, the grenade launcher. So I'm going to unlock that. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of all that rubbish. And I'll put my pistol there. So now I've got a, a grenade launcher and a pistol. So here is basically a campaign that I've um, made earlier, as it were. Um, so I've got this uh, large attack ship, and it's actually a mothership with two um, fighter jets connected to it with um, sub vehicle spawner components and held in place by tractor beam components. So I can actually release them uh, like this and, um, and then apply the docking again. Um, which is pretty cool and um, what we can actually do is um, move this attack fleet um, we are actually uh, here and there's an enemy fleet there which we can go and attack so we can select this mothership uh, move it into position um, and then click engage this area so here we are um, attacking the enemy um, so we can kind of have these you can engage these enemy fleets anywhere on the map that you want and I can just release my fighter jets now and there we'll go and engage the enemy. Um, and I'm just turning my uh, mothership onto a broadside so that it can open up its guns. And we can see um, here it's just pulverizing this um, enemy fighter that's got too close. And there's its ammo barrel blowing up. Um, and then we can have take take a closer look at the enemy fleet that we're actually attacking. So we have um, an airship that's fallen in the water after taking some quite heavy damage and its balloons have fallen off. Um, another little little vehicle there. And here um, a large boat. It's got a very large gun at the front here and a row of cannons down the side. And we can see our planes coming in to attack it. Um, what we can actually do at this point is retreat back to our home base. So at any point you can retreat. Uh, any vehicle that's not um, completely destroyed can come with you. Um, if you press the retreat button it will actually tell you what can come with you and what can't. 
So it's telling us that our mothership plus two, which is the two sub vehicles, uh, can come with us. So nothing's going to be left behind in this process. Um, so just choose our spawn point, uh, tell it to spawn in the air, and off we go. So here we are back at our home base island. Um, so we can see, um, oh, it's going to apply these docking, apply the docking of these two fighter jets at one more time. Um, and now try and make our way back to, to base. So what I've basically done is got into one of these two jets and I'm just going to fly that back to base because it's the fastest way to get back there. Um, you obviously can choose on the map where you spawn, so I just chose somewhere a bit too far away. I'm just heading into the runway now. Uh, just kill the um, thrust here and just fall onto the runway. Um, and let's have a look around this this base. So you've got a big runway with loads of different vehicles, um, docks onto it. Mainly it's just the same plane loads of times. So what I'm going to do is just dock the mothership again. So I'll just press on on the tractor beam. You'll see it turn around. And then um, we'll see it actually just docking straight in. So when the um, when the mothership is actually docked, it's two, two vehicles are going to have to fly off because there can't be a, um, a chain of um, docked vehicles in from the vets right now. Um, and we can go and take a look at what's what's in the um, in the fortress. So we've got our repair station here. We've got um, two very large cannons here, facing kind of forward from where the enemies are coming. A missile turret there. Um, another laser designated set of missiles here. And here we have a big array of fortress turbines, an auxiliary engine, um, and a main engine. There's some ammo barrels and ammo processors, and here is some um, oil drills and resource gatherers. Now many of them are turned off because the oil, uh, the resource zone is actually quite depleted at the moment. Uh, what we can do from our strategic GUI is basically just undock our forces. So whenever enemies attack us, we can just un undock our forces and uh, send them into battle. So there's a uh, uh, two small boats being undocked. And then we can just select our planes and click release dock and they will automatically go into combat mode and attack. So that's the sort of thing that you can get after a couple of hours playing the campaign. So I hope you've enjoyed watching that and have learned a few things. Um, if there's anything you're still unsure of, just come onto the forums at www.fromthedepthsgame.com forward slash forum and you can ask any questions there and um, suggest any improvements. I always happy to hear new ideas and I hope to see you uh, on the forums at some point soon.